Greetings, friend. Do you see how to solve a cell in this puzzle using the colored boxes? In this tutorial, I'll show you six solving combinations using double cell pairs like this one. You won't believe how many cells you can solve in my third example. Puzzle links are in the description below. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, for my first example, this is a classic Sudoku by Bondi that I featured on my channel. What you might notice here in this cell is what are the possible candidates, right? You have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, or 9 in this cell. So that's why the 6, 8 is marked there. If you look here, it's the same situation. You can have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, or a 9. And so both of these cells can only be a six or eight, and they share a house. A house is a Sudoku row, column, or block. Since they share column eight, and these are the only two possible candidates, this is called a naked pair. Whenever you find a naked pair, you can eliminate those two candidates from every other cell in the respective house. Something else I want to point out is that these, this naked pair, the six, eight, they are in two different blocks, okay? So it's going to limit a little bit the amount of uh, eliminations that we can do. But you want to look at this cell right here. This is where we're going to be able to make a solve. Normally, this cell could be a 1, 6, or an 8. But since we have a naked pair right here, we know the 6 has to be in one of these two cells, and the 8 has to be in the other. This is also called a conjugate pair. So if, you know whatever is in one cell, it has got to be in the other one. And since that's the case, 6 and 8 got to be in these two cells, this cell cannot contain a 6 or an 8. Otherwise, we'd have, if you put a 6 or 8 here, you'd have one of these cells being empty. So we know we can solve this cell for a 1. This is a pretty common case where you find a naked pair in only one house. Let's see what happens when the naked pair belongs to two houses. For our second example, let's look here in column for this puzzle by Ashish Kumar. You see, you already have a one, three, five, six, and eight in the column. So what we're missing is a two, four, seven, and a nine. And now you wanna look and see what eliminations we can make in each of these cells. Well, I have a four right there, so this can't be a four. And then I have a seven right there, so this can't be a seven or a four, because I have a four right here. And then because of the seven and nine in here, this cannot be a seven or a nine. So what you might notice is right here, you have a naked pair. The two and the four are the only two possibilities for those two cells. So what it means, like we said in our first example, is it cannot be, uh, these candidates cannot be the solution to any other cell in this house. So in column four. So that means we can eliminate a two from right here and solve this cell for a nine. And then we can eliminate the 2 and the 9 that we just solved and solve this cell for a 7. However, we're not done. Since this naked pair is within block 8, it's part of two houses. It's part of column 4 and block 8. These are called locked canons. And when you have locked canons, you can not only solve in the first house, that column, but now we can use that to solve within the block. And so what you might notice is if we didn't know that was a two, four naked pair, you would think you could have a two, three, four, six, and eight in all these cells. And you can eliminate an eight from right there and a three. You can eliminate, you know, the three from right there and the four. Eliminate the four from there. And then you look right here and you go, okay, I got a four, I got a six in those cells. You'd be like, oh, well, you know, I can't quite make all the eliminations. But since we have this 2 and a 4 here, they cannot be in any of these cells. So this cannot be a 2. That's got to be a 6. This cannot be a 6 or a 2. That's got to be your 8. And then this couldn't be a 2 or an 8. That would have to be your 3. So whenever the naked pair is also locked candidates, you see you can do some more solving. If you want to solve even more cells using naked pairs, check out the third example. For my third example, this is Forage Payage by Bondi. And I will warn you, the last cell solved here is this five, and we had to use a remote 
pair. That's an advanced strategy. But from this point on, we can start using naked pairs to finish the solve. If you look here in block three, the only two cells remain is a 4 9. So that's going to be a naked pair 4 9. It's easy to find the naked pairs when there's only two possibilities left in the block. But those are still called naked pairs. That's also a 4 9. And you notice this 4 9 links to this 4 9, which is in this column, which links to this 4 9 right here. Okay. And then this 4 9 links to this 4 9. Right? Those are the only two possibilities. So in this block, that's only a 4 9. This 4 9 links to 4 9 here, okay, and links to this 4 9 here. And what we are looking for here as we're filling these out is if you can find one of these candidates, a 4 or a 9, that will disrupt this big chain that we just created, then we're going to be able to solve all of these cells. And so you notice you got a 4 9 here. And so in column 3, you know, this could be a four or a nine. And it's linked into this block here, block one. And so this would also be a four nine. However, we have a four already right there. And this is huge. And so you wanna keep doing this scanning. If you're filling out all these cells like this, you keep going until you find one of those. And then once you see that one solves, uh, one of the cells in the chain, you're gonna be able to solve all the cells in the chain. Now, this has to be your 9, and these two cells have to be 4, which now makes these two cells a 9, which makes these two cells a 4, which makes these two cells a 9, and this cell's a 4, a 9, and a 4. We were able to solve all of those just because we followed our naked pairs all the way until we found one of those candidates that broke the chain. We're about to move on to hidden pairs, but be advised my last example does apply to naked and hidden pairs as well. For my fourth example, this is Rainbow Beetle by the T-Rex, and this is the very start of the grid. What you might see is you have a 5-8 coming up column 4. You have a 5 and an 8 cutting across row 2, and then a 5 and 8 cutting across row 3. Try to scan in pairs like this if you can, because what it shows is that these are the only two possibilities for five and eight here in block two. And so since they're the only two possibilities, these two cells have to be a five and an eight. Now, if you looked at it, you would notice that you could have a one, two, and three, a seven and a nine possible in this cell, and you could have a two, three, seven to go along with the five, eight in this cell. But since we know that these two cells, ha one has to contain a 5 and one has to contain an 8 because they don't fit anywhere else in block 2, then we can eliminate all those other candidates. And this is called a hidden pair. And so a hidden pair exists when two different candidates are limited to the same two cells in the Sudoku house. But other digit candidates appear to be valid in those cells. The limited digits are hidden among other candidates, but are the only viable cans for those two cells. Download my free Sudoku solving guide from the pinned comment below to read the definitions of naked hidden pairs, as well as the other five strategies I cover in it. And this is huge, because what does this do for us? It actually allows us to solve a cell. Because if you notice, where can a seven go now here in block two? Well, it can't be here because of this seven, it can't be here because of this 7, and it can't be here because of the hidden pair. So now we can solve this cell for a 7 and make some more progress in this puzzle. Now let's move on to our next example that applies to not only hidden pairs, but naked pairs as well. All right, this is from round 6, puzzle 4 of the 2023 Sudoku Grand Prix. We had just started making some progress here. If you notice, you have a 7 and 8 cutting across row 3. Then you have a seven and eight coming up column four. And so there's only two places for the seven and eight. And despite there being other possibilities for candidates, we know that this is a seven, eight hidden pair. And what it forces is these two cells to be a three and a four. But what I wanna show you is that since we, we did create a naked pair, that's not all that we did. This seven, eight hidden pair, since it's lined up, 
in the column and in the block, it's these are locked candidates. And they also can act as a pointing pair. And so a pointing pair means that the sevens and the eights, since they gotta be in one of these two cells, they cannot be anywhere else in the block or anywhere else pointing down the column. And this is gonna allow us to solve another cell. So whether it's a naked or hidden pair, this will apply. And since a seven can't be anywhere down here, and it can't be anywhere else in column four because of that seven, and you have this seven cutting across row eight, we can solve for a cell right here, four, eight, seven, because of that hidden pair acting as a pointing pair. Now you're gonna need this knowledge for our next example. Okay, our sixth example. This is Valentine by Florian Wertman. What you need to know is I solved some cells already in this puzzle, and then this seven came down, column three, and this seven cutting across row six creates a pointing pair of sevens. So that's important. Uh, we'll need that a little bit later on. But we can find a couple of hidden pairs pretty quickly. You notice how you have this eight, four here. You notice you have a five, seven here. Okay, and you have a five, seven here. So first thing, you got the five, seven coming up, and this five, seven are cutting across. The only two places for a five and a seven are right there. And so that is a five, seven hidden pair. That's the only place they can be in block two. And what it does is now it allows us eight and four to only be in these two spots. And so this is going to be a hidden pair of four and eight, but it's also a pointing pair. And I'm going to color these green because these first two are going to set up our third and the hardest to find hidden pair in this puzzle. And so since he has a four and eight has to be in one of these two cells, a four and eight cannot be anywhere else down column five. All right. So if you look across here, row eight, you want to see, are there any restrictions or hidden pairs that we can find? I mean, you could fill all the candidates. And it's going to be pretty lengthy how many candidates you put in there. But let's look. You notice there's a lot of pairs of these fives and sevens. What does that do for us? Since this is a pointing pair of sevens and a five, five and seven can't be here. Because this five, seven, the five, seven can't be here. Because of this five, seven, the five, seven can't be there. Because of this five, seven, they can't be here. And now if you look right here, there's a seven, but you got these two fives and this five. We can actually solve that cell for a five. And so now a five, seven can't be here either. But a five, seven could be here and it could be here. Since there's only two possibilities now for that five seven in row eight we know that's a hidden pair five seven and this is going to be the one i'm going to color orange and so the five seven are limited to those two spots and you can check it you're not going to find a place to put a five seven anywhere else in that row nothing else can be in those cells how does this help us solve a cell well let's look at the restrictions of places on the fours you got a four here so it can't be in any of these cells you got a four here, can't be in this cell. And if you remember, this four a hidden pair acts as a pointing pair. A four cannot be in this cell either. The only place left you could put a four in this puzzle in row eight is right here. And so thanks to three hidden pairs, we're able to solve a four right there. See if you can spot the double cell solving combo in this video. If you like this content, buy me a coffee. Invest in the future of this channel. I'd really appreciate it. I want to thank all the setters for letting me feature your puzzles for this tutorial and thank you so much for watching.